Well, why, why don't you all tell me what else you want to know since I just kind of talked a long time there. I'd love to answer questions that you, you care about. I, I think you work with refugees. So. Mm. You want to hear more about the refugee work? Yeah, yeah so um, when I, I kind of made a, a mention to this of serving in some strange places, one of the, I did my curacy in a very traditional, um, mostly white church in Asheville, North Carolina on the north side uh, called Grace Episcopal Church. And beautiful stone church on the hill, pumpkin uh, pumpkins all on the hill that the whole neighborhood can see around uh, that raises money to benefit uh, Haiti uh, every year. Um, really a great community. And it came time to end my curacy. And so I, I was looking at whether or not um, moving to uh, be a rector at a church in uh, Washington State uh, was, a, was a good fit. And my bishop at the time, uh, the bishop who ordained me, Bishop Taylor, uh, asked me while I was in the midst of that process if I would consider being his canon for Spanish-speaking ministries, which came with also serving our uh, primarily undocumented Spanish-speaking church, La Capilla de Santa Maria. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this, Bishop Taylor. I mean, like, I Spanish is not my native language, even if it's part of my family. And my, my grandparents didn't teach my father or his brother Spanish because they were very big into assimilation. And so that's why I speak with an accent. And um, luckily I spoke Spanish with them at the very end of their life, so I got to experience them that way, but it was, uh, I had to learn Spanish as a, as a second language. And so uh, how am I gonna be a priest in my non-dominant language? Like, how will I hear confessions? How will I do all the things that are required? Well, the answer is um, you show up faithfully and God does the rest. Um, and it was an amazing experience that ended up uh, causing me to rely a lot more on God as expressed in the scripture as the one thing culturally that we all held in common. Uh, we can we can all reflect on the Bible together, even if we didn't have the same movies or books or music that uh, made up our our cultural background. Um, and that work among undocumented folks, particularly as dealing with roadblocks and a the county that in which we were placed uh, was a an immigration and customs enforcement hub in which they were kind of rounding our folks up and then putting them in jail up to three nights and then kicking them out because ICE wouldn't reimburse in the county jail more than three nights. So, I mean, like, you, you start to see the, the machinery of kind of oppression, um, and we were able to, to make some headway and, and, and gain some respect and, most of all, gain some protections for people through our larger church work, which, when St. Paul's in Rome came open with the Joel Nakuma Refugee Center, was work that was helpful to build that program into what it is today. Um, so instead of undocumented folks, primarily from Latin America, um, I went to Rome and saw the whole world gathered. Uh, you know, the old adage that all roads lead to Rome. <coughs> we experienced that every day in the refugee center. It was open Monday through Friday from uh, 8.30 in the morning until uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. and. Um, Little by little, we were able to build uh, a center that focused not just on the most immediate needs, which were important. You know, people don't have food or uh, you know, rest, you know, you can't do much else. But satisfying those things, but really trying to build a program that was about rebuilding lives. And so that took a team, building a team of professionals and volunteers. We went from five regular volunteers to 50. Uh, which was really important. So then uh, we were able to expand that ministry significantly. Uh, and, and in all parts of it, what was most amazing is that we, the volunteers and the staff were not all uh, Christians, um, which was really great actually, because our goal was to try to promote uh, the peace that we believe is the peace of Christ, but that others would name differently but it's the same piece. Um, and we try to find ways of connecting to one another as opposed to distinguishing. And one of the most beautiful moments is when a, 
a staff member who actually came on May the 4th to uh, the ordination. He was able to travel. He's from Afghanistan, so that was no big, that was no small feat uh, to get him here. But he said, Father Austin, this is so cool. I was like, what, Mom? Said, what's really cool? He's like, uh, we, were, we were around um, the end of Lent, and he says, right now in the JNRC, we're having a, uh, we, Jews are here to celebrate a Seder uh, in, in which we're asked to participate. You've got Muslims who are doing the security right now and who are making sure that everyone is safe in a Christian church. He goes, this is it. He's like, this is, this is the thing. And I'm like, yeah, so you're right. You know, like, like it is. It's, it's, a, it's a glimpse of what our, our future could be on earth, but it's definitely a vision of what we will experience uh, when this time on earth is, is done. So um, that was that was a really wonderful experience to get to, to work with uh, guests. And you know, we went from everything from um, advocating for the rights of guests uh, to making sure that um, we could work on large issues like housing. And that's still a, a growing need in the area, but just like it is here. But it was a uh, some really beautiful things that God was able to do that way.